Happy National Cinema Day, everyone. Uh, over the summer, I've watched many different films from different decades, from different directors and genres, and to celebrate, I want to give you my top 10 of them of summer 2023. All right, so first, let's go through some honorable mentions. Eyes Wide Shut, Barbie, Requiem for a Dream, Josie and the Pussycats, and Glorious Bastards, Inside Lewin Davis, Manchester by the Sea, The Grand Budapest Hotel, Little Women, Midnight Cowboy, Head, and After Sun. Number 10 is Metropolis. Now, Metropolis is directed by Fritz Lang. It's a 1920s film about futurism, uh, German expressionism, and many other uh, different things. So, this is set in a futuristic world where two classes are separated, one super rich, one super poor. It has a mini love story in it. Uh, the great things about Metropolis is the scope and the sets and the cinematography. I think this is a very revolutionary uh, film in the genre and in film overall. Number nine is The Graduate, starring Dustin Hoffman. Uh, this film is about a recent college graduate uh, fornicating with <laughs> Uh, with one of his neighbor's uh, mothers. So it's, it's really strange, but nice, a nice coming of age story. It's a good mix of black comedy and drama. Um, great performances overall. And for me, it really resonated. So yeah. Number eight is Seven Samurai, directed by Akira Kurosawa. This is a great 1950s uh, samurai film. What I really like about it is there's a different diverse group of characters that come together to fight uh, evildoers from a village. So it's, it's really cool uh, to see people come together as, as well as uh, the awesome, interesting, uh, brutal fight styles that is seen. And I also like great character moments inside of it. So uh, yeah. Number seven is Martin Scorsese's uh, The Wolf of Wall Street. Over the summer, I watched many different Square Sissy films, but this is probably my favorite out of all of them. Uh, I do agree with the majority of people that this is uh, DiCaprio's best performance. He's phenomenal, uh, as well as Margot Robbie, Jonah Hill, and the whole ensemble. It's great to see a uh, scumbag uh, and other scumbags uh, rise to cheat this system. And, like, what, what's the negatives and downfalls of that? And it's, it's a great mix of black comedy. And, like, I, I really like the editing in the screenplay. So, yeah. Wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street. Number six is Ang Lee's Brokeback, uh, Brokeback Mountain uh, from 2005, starring Hugh Fletcher and Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, these characters are both uh, gay lovers, and we get to see their positives and negatives towards each other, how it affects their relationship with their uh, lives. It's a very great, uh, dramatic piece of work. So, uh, I also love the cinematography uh, in this of the mountains. And again, the great performances from Ledger and Gyllenhaal. It's, it's very uh, gut-wrenching. Number five is Singing in the Rain by Gene Kelly. This is now my favorite uh, golden uh, Hollywood uh, musical. I, I love the choreography. I love the musical composition, the cinematography, the, the production design my oh my gosh the classic west side story used to be my number one now it's my number two i just i just really uh enjoyed uh seeing in the rain yeah number four is christopher nolan's oppenheimer nolan is one of my favorite directors so i was already excited for this and i i am interested in uh world war ii history so it, we i get a great performance from uh, Killian Murphy as Oppenheimer. We get to see his mindset building the bomb during the bomb and after the bomb. Uh, I love the whole ensemble. I think uh, the score is fantastic. And I think this is a great, uh, relevant historical film, especially right now with war and um, crazy things like that. Number three is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. If you don't know already, Spider-Man is, if not my favorite superhero, if, I mean, if Batman's not number one, then, then it's Spider-Man, flip-flop, Batman, Spider-Man, you get it. 
Um, I love the animation in this. There's uh, different varieties of animation. The fantastic voice acting is there as well. Uh, the score is good and the soundtrack is good, but I also love the story of Miles Morales trying to deal like, okay, deal with how could I um, make my own destiny and seeing the other Spider-Man as well from different uh, multiverses were, were great. I, I'm excited for the third part. Even though if it doesn't come in like two years or three years or four. Number two is Elham Klimov's uh, Come and See. It's, it's hard to watch. It's about the conflict between uh, Belarus and the Nazi German occupation. Um, this is one of the, probably the best anti-war film I've ever seen. It's also very hard to watch. Uh, I will watch it again sometime in my life but not for like a long time. I, if you have kids, I recommend don't showing them this. I, I'm an adult and I could barely watch it. Um, so it is, is a fantastic film, but it's just, it's hard to watch. Finally, my number one is Park Chan-wook's Old Boy from 2003. Uh, this is probably one of the best South Korean films I've watched. It's about a man who is trapped within a prison cell uh, for 15 years and he comes out trying to find his daughter. And throughout the film, uh, we see awesome action sequences and other things that he occurs. Um, the, fin the fantastic performances is there. Uh, the awesome cinematography and fight choreography is there. Like, I, I knew about this film for a while, but I just never watched it uh, until uh, this past summer. And it just passed its 20th anniversary, so that's pretty cool. All right, everyone, so those are my top 10 movies that I watched over the summer. Go check them out if you're interested, and have a nice day.